Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install a basic clutch kit. The clutch that we're going to be installing today is a Center Force 2. This is their basically stage 2 clutch system, one step higher than their Center Force 1. This one is the orange one, but this one actually uses a segmented clutch disc, which is designed for higher performance applications like my turbocharged carbureted LS that I'm going to be drag racing very, very soon. While I was picking up that clutch kit, I also had Center Force resurface my flywheel because whenever you go ahead and replace your clutch, you're going to want to resurface your flywheel. This is very similar to your brake system on your car. When you go to hit the brakes and your car shakes, when you hit the pedal, that's because your rotors are warped. It's the same basic thing. When you go to let off on your clutch and your vehicle shimmies a little bit and chatters, that has to do with the clutch disc skipping against the flywheel so in order to get full proper engagement and break in i went ahead and had them surface the flywheel while i was out there even though we're going to be installing a performance clutch the steps that we were going to be taking are the same as if you were installing a regular stock replacement clutch with a full face disc the only time things start to get a little bit weird is when you install twin disc and triple disc systems those we might get into later videos but for today we're just going to be installing a regular clutch system the next step is to actually go to the back of your engine where you pulled your transmission and clutch from and just take a look at it real quick. There are a couple problems here that you guys can see. The first one is that everything's kind of like soaked with oil. So there is a problem with my rear main seal. As you guys can see, it is very clean here, but it's not clean around here. So the oil was falling onto the flywheel and the flywheel was flinging it around and that can cause a lot of problems. It can actually saturate your clutch disc and make it wear out prematurely. It'll also cause problems problems like slipping and chatter so you want to keep all your clutch components as dry as possible I'm gonna go ahead and replace this rear main seal and then we're gonna go ahead and clean up around here the next thing you're gonna see is that when I painted this engine I didn't clean off the mating surface between the transmission and the engine so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now because if the transmission is not properly seated it'll move around as you're accelerating and you can possibly break the bell housing or cause other problems so we're gonna go ahead and clean this area right here and we're gonna decrease grease the back replace the seal and then throw the flywheel on all right so now that I've done my best to clean everything up around it and I've replaced the rear main seal I went ahead and I installed the flywheel I installed the bolts and I tightened them down in three different stages the first one I did at 35 pounds second one I did at 55 pounds and the last one I did it at 75 pounds which is a torque spec in the GM manual when you're installing a flywheel your particular engine might be a little bit different, but what doesn't usually change is the way you tighten down these bolts. So you're gonna wanna tighten them down in a crisscross pattern. You're gonna start at one, then go across there, then go across and go across and go across. And you're gonna go all the way around until all the bolts are tightened down. If your engine is externally balanced, then your flywheel is gonna have to be installed in a very specific position because the bolt holes that go around to bolt down the flywheel are not all in the same spot. So one or two or all of them are gonna be in different locations, so that way you can get the orientation of the flywheel correct. LS engines are, for the most part, internally balanced, so I don't really have to worry about that. I just go ahead and set the flywheel up and then torque everything down. One thing I do have to note about my particular flywheel is that since my flywheel was balanced, right after it was resurfaced. There's a mark here that aligns my pressure plate to my flywheel. So the next step from here is to actually clean off the surface. You guys can see that I've been touching it because I needed to hold it in order to torque everything down. So I've been touching it with greasy hands. So now I'm going to go ahead and swap my gloves over and then wipe everything down. I'm gonna hit everything with brake cleaner and get everything nice and ready because all of these contaminants could damage your clutch disc and cause premature wear. So I don't wanna be doing this a second time so I'm going to go ahead and clean this off as best as I can, and then we're going to install everything together. All right, so I've got the clutch disc and pressure plate installed on the flywheel. This stage 2 clutch is actually really, really heavy, so I'm going to show you guys what I did with the stock clutch because that one's way lighter than this one. All right, so I'm going to show you these next couple steps on the old clutch. I'm going to go ahead and open this box where my old clutch is. And then when you open the box, you're going to get your little pamphlet with the center force information. Your warranty information is here along with the package of the new pressure plate bolts that your clutch may or may not come with. Your registration card in case you have to use the warranty. And it has a couple of stickers, which are always awesome. 
Uh, then it'll come with two, two pieces of paper. One of them is installation instructions, which is what I've been trying to follow this whole time. What your clutch may or may not come with as well is this pilot tool. Mine didn't because I already had one. This is probably the most important tool that you're going to need. If, if your clutch kit doesn't come with one, you can probably pick one up at your local auto parts store. This is what's going to align your entire clutch system to your flywheel. And let's go ahead and pull the pressure plate and clutch disc out of the box. I'm going to show you how this works. Before moving on, I want to tell you guys that I'm not purposely trying to record these videos with a lot of noise in the background. As you guys can see, there's like a windstorm going on right now, and it's just been raining, and snowing, and it's windy, and it's cold, and right now it's just not a good time to be making videos. But by the time the weather clears up, it's probably going to be way too late. That's why I'm trying to get these videos out to you guys, even if the sound's a little off, I do apologize. But let's go ahead and jump into this. You're going to want to lubricate the tool a little bit from before you actually use it. According to the paperwork that Center Force supplies, you want to use dry graphite lubricant or nothing at all when you're putting this thing together. I personally like to lubricate the splines because it makes it a lot easier for me to install everything. But if you're not gonna use the right lubricant, don't lube anything. All right guys, so this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your alignment tool and you're gonna take the pressure plate. You're gonna try to maintain a clean surface on both the clutch disc and the pressure plate. Don't get grease on it, don't get oil on it. Try to keep it as clean as possible. This is a really dirty table, so you really don't want to do it on a dirty table, but like I said, these are my old components, so I don't have to worry about them. They're going in the trash. So you're going to take the pressure plate in your alignment tool. You're going to lift the pressure plate up on its side and just hold it right here. It's not that heavy if you have it on a table. Then you're going to take the alignment tool and put it down through the middle of the pressure plate so it does this. Then you're going to go ahead and take your clutch disc and your clutch disc is going to have two different sides. On the center force clutches, they do have stickers on them that will tell you which way it's supposed to be oriented. But if you don't know, typically the thicker side or the side that protrudes, that goes toward the clutch and the flat side will go to the engine. But it's not always like that, so make sure to double check. So we're going to take this clutch disc and we're going to go ahead and try to align it onto the pressure plate and we're just going to go ahead and stick it like this. So now you have the pressure plate, the clutch disc, and the pilot tool all ready to go. So now what you're going to do is you're going to pick up the pressure plate with one hand and then you're going to hold the rest of it with your other hand. So you're going to want to do this. You're going to lay it over like this, take it to wherever you need to go. Let's say the pilot is right here. We're going to assume this is the back of the engine. The pilot bearing is right here. The tip of this alignment tool will go into the pilot bearing. So you're going to go ahead and align this first. And as you guys can see, it's being held on on the pilot bearing. Then you're going to go ahead and push everything against the flywheel. You don't want to let this go because if you let this go, it's going to come off. So we're going to go ahead and put this back on the make-believe pilot bearing. And then you're going to make sure your bolt holes are somewhere nearby. Let's say they're in this baggie. Drop the baggie. Grab a bolt. And then you're going to start aligning the bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then once the pressure plate is held in place, I'm going to lay it right here temporarily, tighten it all the way around and toward the very end after everything's torqued down. The tool might be a little bit harder to pull out, but it should pull back out and you should be able to reinstall it and that means everything is aligned. Okay, we're back onto the installation. I went ahead and installed the bolts and torqued them down to the spec of 35 foot-pounds. And that's the spec that is actually given to me by Center Force with the bolts that they included. The instructions also said that I don't need to install any kind of thread locker and so I decided not to, but for peace of mind and if I had some extra laying around, I would probably do it anyway. But the instruction says I'm fine without it, so I'm gonna assume I'm fine without it. After everything is torqued down the way it's supposed to be, you can go ahead and pull out the pilot. So you guys have to pay attention on how this thing comes out. If you have a hard time removing it, it probably means that the clutch disc is crooked inside of the pressure plate. And if it comes out easy, it means everything's all good. One of the last things we're gonna do is actually replace the throw out bearing. This is the one that came out of my truck. As you guys can see, it doesn't really have any grease left in it, and it has seen better days. I have been driving on this pretty hard for the last five years, and it's about done. Center Force actually supplied me a brand new one to match my clutch kit. The difference between these two is that the Center Force one is about a quarter inch taller, but I know how much slack I have for the shift fork, so that's actually not a problem. 
I made sure that the center bore was the same as my old one and I made sure that the shift fork fits inside this groove so everything should be perfectly fine right there. While I was at it I went ahead and cleaned up my shift fork. The next thing I'm going to do is actually grease the pivot and then put everything back together. I'm under the truck again and I want to show you guys that I've got everything already lubed up and installed. I've got the shift fork here. The pivot point has already been greased up. And then I have the throw bearing here and that's all good to go as well. And then another tip I want to tell you guys is that lube up these two little holes that line up the transmission and the engine. These two alignment dowels are actually going to try to hang themselves up when you're trying to install them. So if you have a little bit of grease there that should help you. On an LS you have two of these right here and these are the little dowels, the little alignment pins that I was talking about. So you have one here and one on the other side right over there. Lube them up here and lube them up against the transmission and with that you should be able to install it fairly quickly. Alright so it is now the next day so I'm going to go ahead and start the truck up and make sure the truck engages and disengages properly. So let's go ahead and start this up. Alright so it's in neutral right now. I'm going to go ahead and put the clutch in. I'm going to go ahead and try to put it in first gear and then I'm going to try to go ahead and let off the clutch and it looks like it's working so obviously the clutch is working as intended so the next thing to do is to actually just break in the clutch properly you're supposed to put about 500 street miles on a fresh clutch and what that's supposed to do is it's supposed to allow the clutch material and the pressure plate and the flywheel to properly mash together the clutch disc is going to wear itself to the two mating surfaces and the longer you spend breaking it in the better the clutch material is going to go ahead and bite into the hard surfaces so before i try to put six seven hundred horsepower through this i'm going to go ahead and break it in first and then we're going to get it on the dyno and get some power numbers now that i don't have a slipping clutch so that's all for today i will see you guys all in the next one night wrencher out